Hello, friends, and welcome to Miss Shelved, your bi-weekly dose of bookstore love. I'm your host, Nicole Brinkley, here with another episode. For those of you who are new to the podcast, welcome. Every two weeks, I introduce you to an independent bookseller in conversation with an author they love. This week's bookseller, Claire Benedict. Hi, I'm Claire Benedict, owner of Bear Pond Books, a new and used bookstore in Montpelier, Vermont, that has been here downtown Montpelier since 1973. And bookseller, buyer, manager, the whole bit. Claire came to me about talking to her author because of something very special. They'd been friends for a really long time. That author, Jen Janeri. Hi, I'm Jen Janeri, the author of Muffled and My Mixed Up Very Blue Summer. I write middle grade novels, and I love to talk about books and editing. Settle in as these two talk about a friendship centered around books and what book selling looks like in the current world. Hey, it is great to chat with you. Thank you. When I heard about this new podcast, I knew the bookseller that I would reach out to, and it is such a treat (laughs) to be able to chat with you. And we should tell people about our history together. Yes, we actually have a little history that goes way back before you were an author and before I was a bookstore owner. We were stay-at-home moms with little, little kids. I think we might have been pregnant when we met each other. Yeah, I had Sarah, my youngest, in June of 1996. When did you have Georgia? Georgia was born in February of 1996, and we met shortly before that, I think. And we were part of a great group of moms who were basically a support group for each other in a way. Yeah, it was called the Natick Cooperative Play Group. And in some ways, it seemed so perhaps retro to listeners today because it's like... I don't know. We met in a church basement. It was the way we survived the winters (laughs) of Massachusetts. And it was great. You know, like there were a few stay-at-home dads, but we all just were there for each other. We were all in each other's lives. We made some really close friends in those years in a short period of time. Right. I moved to California in 1999 and I realized looking back that it had been three years, only three years that I was in that community. And yet, we just all stayed in touch over all those years. Yeah, it was a great group. I also moved away a few years later. And then you and I reconnected in Vermont, because I moved to Vermont, you moved to California, and we reconnected in Vermont when you were going to the Vermont College of Fine Arts, which was down the block from my house. It was so amazing. Yeah, otherwise we probably wouldn't have seen each other in 20 years. Right, exactly. Oh, we should tell people it's been like 25 years. Yeah, those little babies that we were pregnant with are 25 years old right now. (laughs) Believe it or not. Hey, one question, Claire. Were you in a book club in Natick? Do you remember that book club? Yes, we were in a book club together, I think. I think that's right. At Susie and Tarek's house, right? That is exactly right. And so we have a long history of talking about books and loving on books. That's true. That's true. And there was a lot of library time back then too. That's right. But I mean, I didn't know I was going to become a bookseller. I don't know. Did you know you were going to become an author then? I can't remember if that was your aspiration at the time. It's been my aspiration since I was like 12. But let's hear the Vermont story. Tell everybody how you ended up going to Montpelier. Yeah, so we were, as we said, living in suburban Boston with Jen and some other friends, and um, we ended up leaving the area to buy a bookstore in Montpelier, Vermont, and that was called Rivendell Books. It was a used bookstore in Montpelier, so we picked up the family and moved here for kind of a new adventure in our lives. It was a bit of a wing and a prayer, and it worked out. And then a few years after we arrived and we're running Rivendell Books, the n- new bookstore across the street went up for sale, and we purchased that, and that is Bear Pond Books. And we have since merged the two together. So, so Bear Pond is now a new and used bookstore. So yeah, there's been a lot of adventure along the way, but that's the short version. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I mean, Bear Pond Books is like the store in Montpelier for author visits and all of that. And so when my first book came out in 2012, I had set the story in Vermont, which is one of the reasons that we connect over Vermont is that I actually went to high school near Burlington. And so when Clara moved up to Montpelier, I gave her the whole scoop on 
living in Vermont. And so when my first book came out in 2012, my mixed up Berry Blue Summer, it was set in Vermont. And I will never forget how Jane, who is the book buyer, you maybe want to say her last name. Jane um, Knight is our Jane Knight. fantastic. She's like the children's room queen slash book buyer. Yes. I came to Vermont to do a couple of book readings. And I'm going to also mention your competitor or perhaps your friend, the Flying Pig Bookstore. And mm -hmm. both Bear Pond and Flying Pig were so kind to me because I was this newbie author and had no idea what I was doing. And I will never forget that Jane recruited like an audience for me. And <laughs> I didn't even have a signing pen. I didn't even know that I was supposed to bring a special pen. So <laughs> Anyways, it was really generous of her to, to, to do that for me. And so it was a great reception and an introduction to how fantastic booksellers are. And you've had quite the tour of independent bookstores recently, right? I have. So my second book, Muffled, came out, which, by the way, is set in Boston. I brought a lot of my good memories of those years in Natick, like the Boston Public Library shows up. And I was actually inspired by a blizzard during my childhood in Boston that was so quiet because the blizzard stopped all traffic. And it was that silence that was like, oh, what if this was like not just nice to have, but necessary for some people to have that quiet? Mm -hmm. So I developed this character, Amelia, who is somebody who is sensitive to sound and tried to imagine what her world was like. And I put all these things in there about Boston, like having a Charlie card for the transit to ride the T. The pet fish name is related to the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love that. I love the, the throwbacks to Boston where you had little kids and yeah, it, exactly. makes, it makes a lot of sense. You're coming full yep. circle there. Uh -huh. So when we left California, because of the pandemic and also because of climate change, we're just flying less. And so we decided to drive across the country. And I thought, why not stop at independent bookstores all the way across the country? And, you know, it was kind of risky with COVID because I didn't know how they would be doing. And I would always ask, are you even open? And some of them were like, yes, as long as you're wearing a mask. And I stopped at bookstores in Phoenix, Arizona, Changing Hands. I went to Blue Willow in Houston, which was such a treat. And nice. Park Road Books in like Charlotte, North Carolina. And oh, in Winchester, Virginia, the Winchester Book Gallery. Just amazing people. Always, either they had my books on hand or they were willing to order them so that I could sign copies when I got there. And it was such a treat. So, you know, I mean, bookstores, how are they all doing? Most of them seem to be doing really well. Claire, how about for you in Montpelier? Montpelier's been doing well. I mean, I think the, the great thing about independent bookstores is that they have a very loyal following who understand the importance of buying local. And that message was already really out there. And, you know, our customers understood that before the pandemic hit. So when the shutdown happened last spring, I, I know we and a lot of others, at least in New England, you know, saw a lot of outpouring of support from their communities who adapted to, you know, backdoor pickup or curbside or what, however people were doing it when we were all shut down. And then when we reopened last summer, adapting to using our website or, you know, wearing masks yeah. and doing whatever they had to do. But people have been super super supportive. I mean, just coming out and helping us any way they could and being patient with rules changing and being patient when there's a glitch on the website or whatever, because it certainly is a lot easier to just walk in and pick a book off the shelf and pay for it. But people have been really supportive continuing through this year. So we've been doing really well. We've also had the benefit of being in Vermont, which has had low COVID rates throughout the pandemic. And like right now has like, I think the highest vaccination rate in the country. So We've definitely benefited from a feeling of safety around that. 
Yeah, totally agree. I love coming to Vermont because it just feels like, ah. Oh. <laughs> We're always really known for our good clean air and good clean living anyway, but this <laughs> pandemic has kind of heightened that reputation, I think. <laughs> I think that's really true. I think I yeah. talked to you in the middle of it and you said that it was hard to switch to becoming a shipping business almost instead yeah. of a store. I mean, we, we were shut down for about two months last year and it was. It's a whole completely different thing. We had to ship or else put things outside on tables and we're no longer making nice displays. We're no longer like, oh, look at the new books. Let's put them here where people can see them. No, we just had packing material all over the floor and you know, <laughs> the display tables were a post office system. And, you know, it was, you know, I'm not going to complain because our customers were there for us and it got us through, but it was, it wasn't fun. <laughs> it wasn't what you go into book selling for, but you know, nobody was having fun then. So <laughs> uh, we're just glad we survived it. Yeah. It's not what we, you know, we, were, we could have been uh, in a warehouse for the way we, we were doing business. And obviously oh. you don't go into book selling because you want to be a warehouse. <laughs> unless... That's right. And that's what I found. That's what I found when I went across the country People who are in book selling love to talk about books. Like the very first bookstore yeah. I was in, I was just like, oh, have you read this book? Have you read that one? And, you know, they were running around writing down titles I was suggesting. And the guy <laughs> I met in Octavia Books in New Orleans, I said, well, how has business been? And he said, well, he thinks that he didn't necessarily get new readers coming in, but he said people who read are reading more. And so I think there was a yeah. general sense that people were helping their local businesses, as you said. Yeah. And especially last year when people were staying home more, you know, there was definitely a demand for books for, you know, parents buying things for their children, you know, people were trying to keep their children occupied and all that. And there was definitely support that way. I think we got a lot of new customers too, using our website, which used to be just a very small part of our business and now has become a very large part of our business. Yeah. So people became more comfortable with that. And people who were not in the immediate area were using our website. We have a lot of out of town customers mm. who are, you know, summer people or VCFA people, the college that is in town, Vermont College of Fine Arts that you're graduated from. It's a low residency college. And so people come here for a couple of weeks, twice a year. And so we have a lot of people who are fans of ours, but then go back to, you know, Michigan or something. And we heard from them a lot during the shutdown and the pandemic as well. Maybe they don't have a local bookstore in their town, so they were buying from us. And that was really nice. It was nice to see the support coming from all corners. Oh, that's really great. That's really great to hear. So yeah, so what have you been reading? I'm going to just say quickly that I am reading The Year We Fell From Space, which is an Amy Sarig King novel. Amy is on the faculty of VCFA and this book is just, oh, it's gripping. And it's about a family coming apart because the dad suffers from depression. And so mm. that's, that's really an interesting book. What do you read? Is that an adult book? It's middle grade. Do you mostly read middle grade? <laughs> I really do. I, I read a lot in my genre. I like to keep up with what's mm -hmm. out there. Sure. And I read not so much YA, but I'll pick up adult books, of course, as well. I'm trying to think off the top of my head of the most recent adult book. I think it's this memoir, All You Can Ever Know by Nicole Chung. Really interesting about oh, yeah. the adopted Korean American describing how she felt so just never fitting in with her with her white community of, of family. And they are her family. Um and also the revelations she had as she searched for her birth family. Uh, but how about you? I'm reading, let's see, I read a lot of fiction, adult fiction, contemporary. I've read a book recently I really liked called Milk Fed by Melissa Broder. I love this book. This is a book about women's appetites. I, I feel like it's women specific a little bit, but it's about appetites. It's about what nourishes us, whether it's food or sex or religion or mother's love. And it's about this character, Rachel, she's a young woman who basically has an eating disorder and controls her food to an extreme degree. And what happens when she kind of lets 
go. And she meets another woman who entices her with frozen yogurt. Yeah. <laughs> and let me tell you, frozen yogurt has never been so sexy. Um, <laughs> this book is really funny. I just really enjoyed it. But it's like very sensual and humorous and very honest about women's perception of themselves and issues around food in our culture. So I, I just loved it. It blew me away. So that's my current favorite. That does sound really good. I, I know everybody's been talking about this book, but I was also really struck by Vanishing Half. Oh, I loved it. That was a good one. Yeah. There's another book that's coming out this summer that I'm like so excited about. I can't wait for other people to get to read it because I read an advanced reader's copy. It's called Night Bitch. And this is also kind of a book about women by women. And this is about a woman. She's got a three-year-old child and she's recently left her job because she was just having too much trouble taking care of her child, keeping up with her job. And she has a husband who travels all the time and it was just too much. She realized she couldn't have it all. She thought the most important thing to do would be to stay home with her child. And here we find her and she's basically come to a point where the options laid out for a woman in our society are just not enough for her. And what happens when being a stay-at-home mom isn't the role you want or trying to have it all isn't the role you want? And the, the very limited number of choices that women have yeah. ultimately in our culture, acceptable choices, what happens when they're not enough for you? What happens? And in this book, the fantastic thing that happens is that our protagonist, who does not have a name, becomes a dog. <laughs> She becomes a feral dog in the night. And that is the title, Night Bitch. Oh and my it God. Is hysteri- this book is amazing. Powerful, really funny, just like gets to the heart of where women are, like where we are as mothers, as wives. I mean, it's kind of brutal, but it's just so entertaining. And I just loved it. And I want to give it to like every single woman I know. <laughs> And Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder. Awesome. Yeah, I, so. I can see how much you uh, you love funny books. I or, do. <laughs> I tend to go for all the earnest books. I'm You're always, super earnest, Jen. I am. I am. I'm going to talk about <laughs> The End of the Ocean. The End of the Ocean by Maha Lunde is about climate change. And it's just this incredible book set in the present day where she's pissed off because I don't know if it was her boyfriend or her husband is like part of this operation that's harvesting water. They're bottling the water, the last glacier. And so she's like, she Mm. takes off. And then simultaneously, it alternates with chapters about a father and a daughter in in a future time where there's severe drought and they're searching for water. And so there's a, there's a fantastic ending when the two stories intertwine about how the female character sets sail with all this water and then the father and the daughter mm. are in this other situation. Anyways, I'm a big evangelist for that book. But yes, it's about climate change. It's, it's earnest. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest is good too. I mean, I think like these books, not every book I read is funny, obviously, but I think what appeals to me about a funny book is when you can take a serious subject like, you know, an eating disorder or a feminist issue, but also bring some humor into it. So they're like books with a lot of meat to them, but you can also laugh a little bit along the way. Maybe that balances it out. So it's not too intense, I guess. I do love a book that can take a hard issue and then inject a little humor into it too and keep me going. Yeah. I think for me, um, yeah, I always read sort of contemporary realism in the middle grade novel genre and a lot of strong, Mm -hmm. independent female characters. And those books tend to have a little bit of humor in them as well, because like Lisa Moore Ramey's Something to Say, a young girl is very shy and doesn't want to do public speaking. Like that's her worst nightmare. And she ends up making friends with a boy in the class who's funny and she ends up having something to say about the school's uh, name change because it was named for an old racist guy. And the school changes their name to honor someone more contemporary and a Latina woman, I think, actually. 
So it's a it's a very contemporary take on a lot of things that are happening in our society today, but it's also about a friendship between those two characters, which is fun. Nice. Yeah. It sounds good. great. It is good. Should we talk a little bit about Muffled? Yeah, sure. So let me ask you some questions. Jen, you said that the blizzard of 78, was it in huh. Boston, when everything shut down, kind of inspired you to think about Muffled and about the sound. Was that like the birth of the book way back then or the birth of the character of Amelia? No. So it's interesting. Like a lot of writers, I have a story file, you know, I like keep little seeds of what if I wrote a book about that? And I just had this little mm -hmm. note in a notebook that said blizzard of 78. What about that quiet? What about that silence? Mm -hmm. And it actually wasn't until I met my husband, John, and realized that he was one of those people who needed that downtime after like an intense social interaction that just needed that quiet to recharge. And then I read a lot, you know, I talked to therapists and a lot of teachers because kids these days are wearing those noise canceling headphones. I mean, if you look at what's happening mm. in our society right now, there's a lot of stimulation coming from screens and the noises around us and urban areas. It's hard sometimes for people to concentrate. And so I just started to imagine this little kid who gets a set of earmuffs instead of headphones because she's trying to be, mm. uh, fix her social. Blend in a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, make friends and stuff. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's been it's been really well received. It's been nice to have people saying, oh, I really like this and connect with this character. Yeah, she's a great character and it's such a sweet story. But it just, it does what literature is supposed to do, just introduce you to somebody else's perspective and you really get a feeling of what it's like for this little girl and how she struggles and you see the world through her eyes for a little while and that's really effective. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of other authors writing in this genre too as well. And I'm a fan of K.A. Holt, Carrie Ann Holt. She mm -hmm. does a lot of books where you get the perspective of the bully, which is just such an interesting thing to do that people don't understand. Well, how come this kid is so mean? And she's written a couple of books. One is called Rhyme Schemer. And I'm a big fan mm -hmm. of that one as well. I love that the diversity in children's books and in all books is such a hot topic right now, but that the diversity extends to not just racial diversity, which of course is very important, but diversity in perspectives from different medical, emotional, social needs, you know, even the bully. I mean, yeah, we all know bullies have a backstory too, which certainly other kids probably don't really ever understand that bullies have maybe a, a reason why they are the way they are. Oh. It takes adulthood to understand that. And it's kind of neat if a kid, like you said, uh, gets to see that experience through a book. I, I have this thing right now yeah. where I'm always putting libraries in my the stories that I work on, because I can't imagine a child not going to the library at some point and having it be like a haven or a source of information. I feel like it's becoming a thing of mine. But when I was writing Muffled, I, of course, remembered the Boston Public Library and the pink marble and the seated lions as you're walking into that lobby. Yeah, the big steps up. Yeah. Yeah. And it's then, a beautiful building. It's so beautiful. And then when I went back, to check, you know, to sort of fact check to make sure that I was remembering it correctly. I had forgotten that the children's room is an entirely new wing of that building. Like it's a very modern yeah. Yeah. part of the building. Just kind of that research you end up doing when you're, you can rely on your memory only for so long that you got to, you got to check it out and see right. if, it, if it's the same. Hey, Claire, do you ever do any writing or no? I do not. I am not a writer. It's something that I think about sometimes because so many booksellers are. I mean, half our staff are writers, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, you know, <sighs> this will give you a peek into my psyche. You know, I read these great books and I know if I wrote, I couldn't achieve the great ones. And so it discourages me from even trying, <laughs> which I know is kind of awful when you say it that way, but it's just like, no, there's such good books out there. I, I don't need to write something mediocre because I don't really think I would be, I wouldn't be a great. So I just like and to enjoy other people's beautiful prose. Yeah. And a lot of being a bookseller is, um, 
I mean, don't you have to like talk about books all day long or no? I mean, to an extent. Yeah. But I can talk about books. I can talk about books all day long. So that's my gift. I'm a really good reader and I'm a really good talker. (laughs) (laughs) Agreed. Agreed. I like talking a lot as well. So I know that there are some writers who are more just shyer or just more retiring. Yeah. Um, But yeah, some writers like to be writers because they get to sit in a room by themselves a lot. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) You're much more social than that, though. I am. I am. So yeah, that's what's going on. And the thing that I'm working on next is I was kind of influenced in about climate change and worried about how I could talk about that in a way that wasn't too earnest. And so I've been working for Mm -hmm. a while on this book set in California this time of like the sea rising and how the main character wants to stop the sea from flooding her home. Yeah. I mean, that's a big issue and near and dear to your heart. That's right. That's right. It is. Because you live very near the water. I do. Right? Yeah. Well, I'm not surprised that you're taking on climate change as an issue. You you like issue books. I you know, do. You like to tackle an issue. <laughs> and I know that environmentalism is very important to you. Yeah, totally. Well, we'll look forward to that one. Thank you. People should definitely check out Muffled because not only is it a great story, I just love the cover of this book so much. Oh. I know that's a really superficial thing to say, but it's so well done. Thank you. I Good really, job whoever did that. I can give credit. It's actually the work of a man named Javier Perez, and he is mm-hmm. on social media as Cinta Scotch, C-I-N-T-A Scotch. And he uh, Mm -hmm. is known for taking photographs of like found objects or like everyday objects and then doing line drawings around them. He does some animations and stuff. So kudos to the Simon & Schuster team for hiring him. I mean, it's just a really lucky break because I I do think people want to pet the cover. Yeah, it's... I know you do. I was just touching it while I was talking about it because I have it here. It's just, it's adorable. Um, you should tell people how to follow you on Instagram, Jen, because following your cross country bookstore tour has been really fun. Oh, thank you. It's at Jennifer Gennari, my full name, and then G E N N A R I. I just was so impressed, as I said, by the booksellers. It was really fun. That sounds fun. I would love to do that. <laughs> I'm always visiting, you know, back when we used to travel, <laughs> I'm always visiting bookstores. It's it's definitely fun to see what's going on in different places, especially this year. Everything must be so different. So that must have been fun. Yeah, it really was. It was a good time. Wait, I have one more question that maybe we can add it in. Claire, did I hear you say that when you like to talk about books, you get to talk on Vermont Public Radio? Can you tell me about that? Oh, yeah. Vermont Public Radio twice a year does a book show, and they tell me one of their most popular shows. And it's one of those call-in shows, and they'll have two guests, often like a bookseller and a librarian. And they've asked me to be on it a few times, and it's really fun. And we just talk about what books we're reading, what are the new books out, and then people call in and talk about what they're reading. And it's just, I mean, it's just like a bookseller's dream where you just sit around and talk about books. And it's an hour show. And at the end of it, every time I'm always like, I could do this all afternoon. We've got to make this a two hour show. And she's like, I know, I know the calls keep coming in. So that's a really fun perk of the job. So yeah, it's a fun thing to do. Yeah, cool. So Jen, this is so fun to reconnect with you as always. Luckily, we get to see each other now and then and do crazy fun things like this. So you can find me at bearpondbooks.com and we're on Instagram as at bearpondbooks and on Facebook at bearpondbooks. And this was a really great time. And thanks everybody for listening. Thank you, Claire. It's been so fun to talk to you about just everything, this angle of your life, and also just to talk again about remembering those years in Natick so long ago when we were um, (laughs) running around with our little ones and also talking about books back then. So, um, And who would have known? We never then would have guessed we'd end up here, right? (laughs) I know. Um, Especially for writers, because for writers, sometimes it's so hard to think that you'll ever get published. And then it's like, you finally get there and you just can't believe it. So I'm always so super happy to, to have booksellers 
on the side of the authors. But anyways, if you yes. want to find more about me, you can find me at jengenary.com. That's J-E-N-G-E-N-N-A-R-I.com or on Twitter at Jen Jen. And that is just J-E-N-G-E-N-N. And we close the chapter on another episode. If you liked it, and we hope you do, don't forget to subscribe and follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, we're on them all. If you really like what we do, you can support us by following on Instagram and Twitter at MissShelvedPod. Early access to episodes, as well as lots of other cool perks, are available over at my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash nebrinkley. We'll be back with another episode for you in two weeks. Until then, happy reading! Mm -hmm.